Welcome to the 2022 Polini Thor 202 installation review. This is a 205cc two stroke engine rated for 33 horsepower with a maximum RPM of 8500 RPM with a compression ratio of 11 and a half to 1. Features a float bowl carburetor, a balance balance shaft for an extremely smooth engine during cruise I can attest it's rated to have excellent fuel economy and it has a wet clutch with a gear drive reduction system set up for a nice and big 140 centimeter prop the weight is flipping heavy. I would guess something almost 18 pounds heavier. Something like that. It's ridiculous. And it's ridiculously awesome. So you just have to ignore that. Check out this engine plate here. Totally universal engine plate. And there's some wiring some fuel system we can go through there. That choke is just hanging there. Typically, get, typically gets installed on the harness shoulder strap. That choke there. So I'm not uh, having to reach back there and shut the choke off or take the motor off. Have a big old radiator up there. And again, those wires in the middle are the strobes. And there's the little strobe drivers on that engine plate. And this is a fully titanium frame, 16 millimeter tube by one millimeter thickness. Here's that custom LED strobe electronic system using a 24 volt cobalt power pack. Going to do a junction box where that 24 volts is dropped to 15 volts. There's some programming buttons. Again, you can use any brand DeWalt Milwaukee get these adapters of course it's fused and that 24 volts actually travels up to the throttle so I can use thinner gauge wire here's that junction box and this is our throttle cable system with three systems going there the strobe switch the engine monitor RPM gauge and the throttle itself. Here's the quintessential off-grid with cruise control. The nice Sky Sports built-in uh, cylinder head RPM and hour meter with a nice little custom LED switch right there. It's a little piece of aluminum to protect it from uh, being accidentally actuated. And here's a close look at the ground wire to this kill switch for the engine to ensure that there is an excellent ground. With the Polini, there is not an excellent ground, so you have to add your own. Through that carburetor you can see you don't want to rely on the metal to metal contact through the slide mechanisms. Here's another look in the, that zip tie system, just for extra safety. Here's the cylinder head temperature gauge and RPM meter. A little bit of extra slack and strain relief so some of those wires are looped around. Here's the water head coolant water temperature sensor and the factory installed bung for the exhaust gas temperature sensor. And both of those will be routed to a custom mount system. And let's take a look at the airbox safety strap and those horns in the airbox. Yep, that is my shoddy paint job and I will revisit that and uh, get those taken care of when the weather gets a little better. Prep that. But you can see the safety cable there. Do not forget to install a safety cable system. That cable came with the Polini engine and I uh, just used it there. And those red hoses are custom modification by me. 
Here's a look at that Del Orto float carburetor. It does have a fuel pump. We'll take a closer look at that. Here's that wet clutching gearbox right there. Here's that Del Orto VHST 28 millimeter float carburetor. Here's that fuel pump. And that uses intake pulses of the engine. And you can see right here, that hose comes back up to where the reed cage is, takes vacuum pulses from the intake strokes. Here's the classic Polini drain funnel. So that is a funnel right there to funnel various drains from the carburetor system, including the manual drain for the bull for the very easy main jet changes. So we can follow that down. See the feed system, and that continues down. And you can actually uh, route that to the gas tank, which I may go ahead and do. But this is sort of the first shot. Get her done. Let's take a look at the fuel filter on the gas tank vent, you always want to filter the vented air. So as gasoline is used by the engine, you must have makeup air, otherwise the gas tank would collapse. And up top on the Polini Thor 202 specific, this is a factory vent hole. This is where you'd put that one-way valve and filter. So I would relocate that vent up top. Here's that gas tank, extra large. I believe it is a, you can squeeze 15 liters into this tank, and they're supposed to have a redesigned tank. Fairly simple. Somewhat difficult to access, but if a VP style jug with the long hose uh, doesn't have a problem touching the exhaust. Okay, let's take a quick peek at the pole starter. She uses a Dyneema loop. That goes around the upright there on the livery frame for a right-handed dominant pole. And there's a nice guide right there to protect the starter rope. Here's a common issue. The Pliny Thor 202 radiator this extremely rough ceiling surface, and you can see that's still rough. And I worked that with a lot of sandpaper. And that drains down on the other side, opposite of the fuel drain hose, downside of the frame. Let's look at the Liberty Total Control fully adjustable system. You can see this is a gooseneck mount, and it is adjustable up and down, in and out. And uh, the little cups here are different lengths for the built-in torque compensation by shifting the weights pilot to one side. Have these adjusted slightly above factory. And we'll move on into the EPCO. Super Light Mark II Harness, SLT Mark II. I also have the zip-on rescue container deployment system. And inside of there I have a Mayday 18LT. Here's the back side. And there is some use, a little bit of wear have some flights on this equipment already and you can see I've moved my polycarbonate back protector so this is compatible with the Mark 1 and here are the gooseneck bars and let's look at the rescue attach point on the shoulder harness this is the Mark 2 APCO SLT 
you know, let's follow that bridle. It's a Y bridle. Goes down to soft shackle, triple looped, APCO soft shackle, and into the rescue container. Here's the livery mount, and you can see the offset. One side is lower, one side is higher. This is for a gearbox. The Moster or Bell Tribe would be opposite of this. But since this is a gearbox, this is a Thor 202. That's how you set it up. On the bottom here, I have a uh, crash absorption foam. Uh, something like an SAE team would implement or test, do studies with for their crash management systems. I have to apologize, I did not put the swing arm on correctly, I have it flipped around, and you can see that, and since I noticed it, I cannot unsee it, so I'm sorry, but that is flipped around, and it takes four seconds to fix. Let's look at the rescue system routing again. Here's the bridle. And you must make sure it is on the outside of everything, including instrumentation, those little EGT thermocouple wires there. Those must go under the bridle. There's a 
miniature zip tie on the arm there that will easily break under little force and that sheathing will easily rip apart under my weight. And here's that harness mount on the Liberty Specific and uh, I confirmed the orientation by looking at the Fly Products rider installation uh, user manual for that frame. And here's the backup strap and APCO apparently was low on their universals. They sent me two small ones. So I have it looped through. You can see the red of the harness loop for the swing arm. And also notice the offset of those blocks with this particular frame. That's how it's offset for weight shift. Put my weight on the right side. Here's the additional spot to install your backup bridles to your beaners. So instead of the routing that I used, you could also use this. The lengths were not correct for me to use those locations. But again, those are the backup loop locations. So let's take a look. See those blocks offsetting the harness to the right? The gooseneck mount is short on the right side as well to put the pilot's weight on the right side. And again, it's because it is gearbox driven. A moster would be completely opposite, a mirror image. Here on the Pliny Thor 202 is the gearbox vent and fill hole. And that is the drain plug. And I would recommend this is a maintenance item that you'd want to change out 5 to 10 hours. There's a vent hole there in the overflow. I find that 100 milliliters actually overflows. And let's take a look at the strobe system. I'm running two Whelan VTX609 strobe lights, Victor Tango X-Ray 609 is the part number. These are the R models for red, and these are synchronized with each other, as well as they're programmable. And these use some custom mounts. Typically, these are installed inside of a headlight or brake light housing. So these are some extremely lightweight and simple mounts. I hope you enjoyed this 2022 Polini Thor 202 installation review video. Thanks for watching.